So hey guys, welcome back to Accelerated Investor. Hey, I've got a real treat for you. Listen, if you are a real estate investor and you love looking at properties, going out and meeting with motivated sellers, but you're not really excited about you know, vetting out leads, talking to leads on the phone, outbound cold calling, outbound, out, you know, cold calling outreach, uh, or doing inbound phone calls. You just want to be out in the field, making more offers, looking at more properties. Then this is a fantastic interview for you. Uh, I'm interviewing a new friend of mine. His name is Gus Munoz Castro. He's the CEO and founder of a company called Power ISA. And his company is an expert at creating and setting up what are called inside sales agents. Inside sales agents is an expert, somebody who's really good at dialing the phone, calling and making outbound calls to either warm leads or cold lists to generate more motivated seller leads. And as you guys know, right now on the MLS, Zillow, there's no auctions happening because the, of the eviction moratoriums and the foreclosure moratoriums. The MLS has only 2.7 months worth of inventory, which is at a 38-year low. So you've got to you know, be more creative in finding leads that are off market. Well, this interview with Gus is a fantastic, fantastic interview about how to increase your conversions of either doing cold outreach or taking your warm inbound leads and converting those at a higher level. So we'll talk about uh, what an ISA does, what the description of an ISA is, their background, their sort of disc profile, the personality profile, as well as how many dials they should be making per day, and why an inside sales agent can quadruple the number of motivated seller leads that you're working with. So I really think you're gonna love this interview with Guz Munoz Castro, Power ISA. Check it out, here we go. Welcome to the Accelerated Investor Podcast with Josh Cantwell. Josh Cantwell. If you love entrepreneurship and investing in real estate, then you are in the right place. Josh is the CEO of Freeland Ventures Real Estate Private Equity and has personally invested in well over 500 properties all across the country. He's also made hundreds of private lender loans and owns over 1,000 units of apartments. Josh is an expert at raising private money for deals, and he prides himself on never having had a boss in his entire adult life. Josh and his team also mentor investors and entrepreneurs from all over the world. He doesn't dream about doing deals. He actually does them, and so do his listeners and students. Now sit back, listen, listen learn, learn, and accelerate your business, your life, and your investing with the Accelerated Investor Podcast. So hey everybody, welcome back to Accelerated Investor. Hey, Josh here. I am super excited and honored that you're back with me again for another edition of the Accelerated Investor Podcast, whether you're catching this on iTunes, wherever you catch your podcasts, on YouTube, uh, on our blog, wherever it's at. Just thank you for engaging with me today and go ahead and share this. Share this across all your social media platforms, all your Facebook groups. Share this so we can share the word, get more people into our community so we can build it for everybody's benefit. Uh, today, my uh, guest is Gus Munoz Castro. He is a dynamite in the sales business for real estate investors, real estate agents, and loan officers to convert more of your leads, whether it's cold outreach, whether it is... Uh, leads coming from Facebook, leads coming from direct mail, leads coming from just lists. He is an expert at converting those leads through online scripts and dialogues and then getting those into uh, your basically appointment calendar to go out and see these properties and convert more deals. Gus, listen, I'm so excited to have you on Accelerated Investor. Let's jump right in. Tell us, Gus, right now, what is one thing in your particular business in today's economy right now that's really working for you that you're really excited about? Hey, thanks so much, Josh. Appreciate it. Um, I'd say, uh, you know, right now as we're recording the podcast, we're in the fall of 2020. You know, COVID uh, is still raging. It's a big issue. Uh, since about March and April, because of everything that happened, people getting locked down, different, different states handling differently, um, there's been a surge of activity online. Right. So, you know, for residential, for investors, I'm telling them, you know, man, you know, we're getting a lot more people browsing their phone, not so much to do, you know, stick at home. 
Uh, there's a lot more people trying to do find things online. So find the, getting your foot in the online lead gen business is important, right? And, mm -hmm. and this is a message particularly for the investors because a lot of the investors, I mean, their base of their, of their business is something like direct mail. It's striving for dollars. It's wholesaling. It's, you know, networking. That's the base of their business. And, and I, I really tell them they should really experiment with online lead gen. They should try mm -hmm. it out, right? A lot of you know, investors have tried out Google pay-per-click. They tried out other avenues. The cost of Google pay per click in this economy right now, it, it's high. It's adequately mm -hmm. priced. Those are motivated. Those are good leads, no doubt. Um, but the cost of them, they can be a hundred bucks a lead, right? With with Google pay per click. I'm telling investors, give Facebook a try because there's been a surge of activity on Facebook, right? A lot of folks, you know, at home, a lot of folks, you know, with a time to burn, um, and they and they're browsing those websites, and you can get a lot of sellers on there, a lot of motivated sellers on those platforms. The challenge is get their attention and convert them. Right. So right now your business, your expertise is uh, as people work through these Facebook ads or whether it's a, a, a cold list, uh, whether it's direct mail, they have this data, this list that they've created of yeah. either people who've reached out to them or people that want to reach out to. And you built a massive team over 75 people. Uh, that are primarily based in Mexico, but they're experts at calling these leads, whether they're warm or cold, and converting these leads into appointments. So tell us about this business. How did you start it? What is your expertise exactly? And how can you help our audience? Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, I, I got licensed in real estate in uh, back in 2010. I was still working full time at Microsoft back then. So I'm an engineer by training. That's kind of my background. Um, but I was always, you know, had the gift of gab, good with people. Uh, my wife got licensed in 2008, kind of kind of pulled me into the business. Uh, and, that, you know, back then, I mean, the world was ending in 2008, right? Yeah. So by the time It's ending again around, right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, it's, a familiar, it's ending again so, for the you know, seventh time. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. 100%. And, and, you know, back then, you know, 2008 was tough. 2009 was just killer. Uh, but 2010... You know, my wife started working more and more with investors uh, that they were active in the market. They were scooping up deals, whether they were short sales, pre foreclosure, foreclosure. You could find great deals on the MLS back then. Right. This is a mm -hmm, long time sure. ago. Um, but, but I got involved in that environment. I got I, I got interested. I got bit by the bug and I went full time into real estate in 2013. Right. So I, I'm running my wife's real estate team. So she kind of hired me into the company. Right. Um, in, in that role, I discovered the inside sales agent role within the mm -hmm. real estate team the inside sales agent role. And that was something that kind of blew my mind, right? Because I'm an engineer, I'm a systems guy. When I saw the potential for that role and the importance of it within the real estate team, I'm like, man, I could build a team, because I'm originally from Mexico. I could, I could build a team of inside sales agents, qualified sales guys, killers. Yeah. And I could do it you know, back home in Mexico and I could really leverage that out, right? So that's how it started, 2015. So Gus, I, I for those four. people who don't know what an ISA is, so I know what an ISA is because I used to own a brokerage. We would generate online leads from Facebook and Google. They would come into what was known as an IDX website, Internet Data Exchange, for those of you that don't know, which means it's a website that's built and it's basically powered by your local MLS and it feeds the properties in your local MLS into your website. There's a lot of IDX platforms out there. There's Commissions Inc., Tiger Leads, all these different kind of companies. We used to own one of those and the inside sales agent, every time someone would essentially opt in on that website to look at houses, the ISA would outbound call that lead. And so this concept of ISA works, whether you're a mortgage broker and you have people opting in on your website saying, I need a quote for refinancing my home. It works if you're a real estate investor and you have a website, like we use a software program called uh, Accelerated Investor Office that website has its own websites. People get traffic to their websites. People opt in whether they want to buy a home or sell a home. And you need someone who's going to outreach outbound call that new opt-in, that new lead. So the ISA, if you're not familiar, is an inside sales agent, an inside sales rep who bangs the phones and calls these leads. Those are obviously inbound leads. You can also give an ISA, if you have no inbound leads, you have no website, you could just give them raw lists of, you know, uh, we, we talk about in our webinar about multiple layers of motivation, Gus, about sellers who are 
uh, maybe an out of town owner who also has high equity, who's also experiencing eviction or a foreclosure uh, and who wants to unlock their equity and that also has a vacant house that they want to sell. So that's five layers of motivation. Um, even if they haven't opted into your website, you could still give an ISA that list skip trace with phone numbers, and they could bang the phones and outbound call those people. Guys, that's what an ISA is. Gus, I love the concept because I did it myself for a long, long time. So you discovered this back in 2013, 14, 15, and you started building a system around that. And now that's the epicenter of your big business. Now you got over 75 people doing this. So let's go back. I just wanted to kind of stick that in there so my audience knows what we're talking about. So you became enthralled with this ISA concept, but you're now at basically ground zero and you start to build from there. So tell us about that. Yeah, 100%. And and I really like the way you laid it out, Josh, because that's how I like to explain it to folks as well, right? There's the lead generation aspect of the business, lead generation, which is Facebook, Google, list building for investors. I mean, list building is a whole other topic, and I'm glad you you covered that. You're an expert in that. Um, That is generating the prospects, generating the leads, whether they're inbound or outbound. doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. What you're doing is the ISA, like you said, okay, you've got those lists, you've generated the leads, you've done the marketing, you've done the list building. Now comes the next part of the equation. That, that you're, you're halfway done there. You're only yeah. halfway done. That's half of the equation. The other half is conversion, 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 right. conversion. And you know, when, when, as a solo investor, as a solo agent, ISA is a role. You are the ISA. The same mm-hmm. way that you're the transaction manager, the same way that you're the admin, the same way that you're the, yeah. the runner, Pushing all the paperwork, the closer, you do it all. A hundred percent. The closer, you're the everything, right? So I say, once you specialize and you kind of grow and you've got people on your team, inside sales agents are that initial touch. They're making, they're, they're, they're hustling. They're making those calls because, you know, surprise, surprise, a lot of these leads don't convert on the first phone call. I mean, Mm -hmm. I love, I would love it if they did. It'd be amazing. Um, But something takes two attempts, three attempts, five attempts, 10 attempts, especially with the motivated sellers on those and that cold outreach, it can take several attempts, multiple attempts, and you want to hit them from all sides. Phone calls is one of the most effective ways, but text messaging works. Email can work. Direct mail, like is a huge part of investors business, direct mail, the yellow letter phenomena, right? all, All that stuff. All of those things work. ISA is another way to help you convert those leads. Those leads are expensive, right? They're not cheap. Those lists as uh, the more layers you add, that list gets pricier, right? It gets more valuable. The list gets more valuable. So you want to make sure you're using every tool in your arsenal to convert those leads. ISA is one more tool. So I, like you said, I discovered that. That was like amazing to me. Um, and, you know, we, we built the team. Built the, we started with four campaigns in Washington State from my brokerage. Uh, the one that I was in, four other people joined me. Um, and we built the team of five ISAs. And, you know, I haven't looked back since. We have now have a team of 75 people uh, serving hundreds of clients across the U.S. and Canada retail, uh, real estate agents, loan officers, and investors. In my newest real estate investing book, The Flip System, you'll learn the proven secrets and strategies that I've used to be a successful real estate investor. You'll also hear the story of my journey from quitting my job to doing over 2,000 units of apartments. The Flip System is now available for a limited time and you can grab your free copy at getflipsystem.com slash podcast. You'll learn the same proven principles and secrets and investing strategies that I used to quit my job and pursue a life of financial freedom. In this book, I'm sharing exactly how I was able to personally close over 750 profitable real estate deals, make over 400 private lender loans, raise over $30 million, and acquire over 2,000 units of cash-flowing apartments. Get my newest book now for free at getflipsystem.com slash podcast. That's getflipsystem.com slash podcast. So describe for me, we talked about this, Gus, we're getting ready for this podcast, we're leading up to the recording about your ideal client who's a real estate investor. So let's say there's one of our listeners, one of our thousands and thousands of listeners is on the phone and they're thinking like, man, I really love running appointments when I have kind of a lead that's teed up for me. 
somebody who's already, we've already talked to, they've already gotten the script. How much do they owe? What's the home worth? It's a, it's a four bed, two bath, or it's a 10 unit small apartment building, or it's a duplex, but I'm walking into a warm appointment with a motivated seller. I really don't like, you know, I don't really like it on the phone. I prefer to be out in the field. So describe for me your ideal real estate investor client that would use your service. Yeah, a gr- great question, Justin. I think that, that's important. That goes kind of to the heart of it. I think if you, when, you're, when you're talking about bringing an ISA onto your team, and this is the same for residential real estate agents, by the way. It's kind of the same concept. You're, you're adding leverage, right? You're adding leverage. The only way you can add leverage without going out of business is if you, as the rainmaker, you take on higher level, more important activities. You've got to be able to do more of those. If you bring on leverage and you do less work, less work gets done, you're not going to get anywhere, right? You're just going to go go around in circles. You're going to spend a ton of money and you're not going to grow the business. If you bring an ISA to make those calls and set those appointments, your time has to be spent, like you said, in the field, closing the deals, closing those deals. So my ideal client on the investor side has deal flow. They've mm-hmm. got appointments coming in. They've got deals. They're closing one deal a month. They can close a couple of deals a month. They have that ability. But to close four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, it's not going to scale for them to make all of these calls and send all these letters on their own. You know, They've probably already leveraged a lot of those activities to an mm-hmm. administrative assistant. It might be a virtual assistant. It might be an in-house assistant. They might already have someone helping them with acquisitions, right? They've got someone making, doing the comps, running comps, and making those deals happen. They might already have that. But at the very least, their time needs to be leveraged to go on more appointments, to go on one, two, three, four appointments in a single day. That is the kind of investor that really can use an ISA to take their business to the next level. Gotcha. And what you do, how do you help them select an ISA that's on your team that based, you know, you guys used to all be kind of under one roof in Mexico. Now, because of COVID, they're all working virtually as well. But these are obviously English speaking people that understand real estate. They understand how to talk to motivated sellers who are going to sell their property, whether it's retail or to an investor. Um, A lot of times that personality, if you will, there needs to be, because you're basically taking someone on your team, but you're also placing them inside of someone else's team. And there has to be kind of a culture fit. I don't mean a culture like Mexican versus American. What I mean is team culture, business culture, that they're like, if I'm working in the field, I got to know that my ISA is kind of asking the questions I want them to ask, setting up the appointment the way I want it to be set. And making sure that I can communicate with them, personalities fit. So sometimes that just doesn't happen. You might have two A players who bought heads. That can happen too. So help help me understand, like if I was a an investor, I've got leads coming in through my website from Facebook ads or direct mail, how would you help me select an ISA for my team? Yeah, so so great question. And it starts with number one, what is the ISA gonna do? That's the first kind of big, the big filter that we use. Are they going to be doing cold outreach, like a true cold caller, not butting heads with, you know, gatekeepers, with other investors, business owners? I mean, that's one profile. That is the cold calling, uh, you know, super high D for people familiar with the DISC profile. It's very assertive, uh, you know, does not take no for an answer, a lot of grit. Uh, They have a lot of those kind of values. Uh, Tenacity and grit is important. Those are almost impossible to interview for, by the way. You got to get someone in the room and have them hit cold calls all day to see yeah. if they actually have grit, by the way. So that's one profile. The other, a little bit of a different profile we found is for folks that are, that are really more into the inbound lead uh, response, nurturing, and conversion, it's a little bit of a different profile. You know, th- that cold calling person is, might not have the same kind of success on that kind of campaign because it is more of a customer service scenario. It mm-hmm. is a sale. You're closing for the appointment but it's a little bit of a different approach. You have to have a lot of empathy. You have to listen to people. You have to have, uh, you know, just be a human on the phone, right? Listen to them and try and get and, and become a solution for them. Listen to their needs, listen to their fears and say, hey, this is how we can solve that, right? So it's a little bit of a different skill set. So that's, that's where it starts. What kind of campaign are we talking about for the investor, right? So, so we, we find the right skill set. And the next part that you mentioned, are they a good fit? Let's say that you find an A player for, for either of these scenarios. Are they going to be a good fit on the team? And we find that out when, you know, when we've placed them in there, we get the feedback. Do they, are they coachable within that team? Are they a good fit for that organization? And if they're not a good fit, we got to switch that person out right away. And that's, mm-hmm. that's, that's the best way to do it by, by learning on the fly, by getting feedback from the team. 
all of our campaigns have account managers. They're talking to the clients. They're making sure that those that those details are not missed. And and, and you know, Josh, it, it sounds like ambiguous, like it's not true. People know this pretty quickly, right? Within a week or two, look, judging the quality of the appointments, the quality of the feedback, is the ISA learning? Are they are they are they a good fit for that team? We know this pretty quickly. Can we can we get progress or not? Um, and that's important to understand uh, because we know the ISA is good at that job. Like they can make calls, no doubt. Do you want to work with them on your team is the, is the next question. Got it. So I've got two more questions for you. Again, we'll put um, Gus's uh, contact information in the show notes. I'll have him shout that out here at the end as well. If you'd like to have his team of ISAs call your leads and work in your business. You guys know I'm a big fan of direct mail. You guys know that I love using lists with multiple layers of motivation. And then I have that that yellow postcard that is half pre-typed. And you guys know my strategy. I like to actually take that black Sharpie marker and actually handwrite the person's name, their address, and then sign off. So it's partially pre-prepared, partially signed off with a black Sharpie marker, just like this one. And we get a huge response from that, especially if you can take the time to actually go do some uh, driving for dollars. So we take this list. It's got multiple layers of motivation. We winnow that down to about 150 leads. We then go drive for dollars, those 100 to 150 leads, looking for signs of physical distress. We might get down to 50, 100 total leads. Then we send out the yellow postcard with that handwritten message on it. So we don't want 5,000 leads in our campaign. We might only want 50 to 100 because we know that there's multiple layers of motivation based on their profile and their list that they fall on. But then there's also physical distress because we've actually driven to that house. So imagine taking that list, turning that over to Gus's office, hiring one of his ISAs, and him nurturing, calling, outbound calling, and getting those 50 to 100 people on the phone and setting up appointments for you. That's one way to do it, got it? Now another way to do it, slightly different, Gus, I know you're very passionate for Facebook leads. Talk to our audience a little bit more about what's going on with Facebook, how to set up a Facebook campaign, some high-level things about why they should be using Facebook to generate motivated seller leads for their investment business. Yeah, definitely. You know, and and I'm passionate about it. I see there's an opportunity there. Uh, You know, costs have come down, attention has gone up on that platform uh, for a lot of reasons. I think I think the 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 pandemic accelerated a lot of things. Right, more people jumped online, more people are buying Mm -hmm. stuff online, more people are spending time online. They they can't a lot in a lot of areas of the country. They can't meet up in the old places they used to. Though they're meeting up online, they're doing a lot of these things on the internet. So it's it's about tapping into that and getting people's attention. Um, I will say this. Facebook and a lot of these online lead gen sources, they work better for residential than they do commercial. That is, that is sure. a big difference. I think for, for commercial, the cold outreach is still the cold best. outreach. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Because commercial uh, brokers that sell apartments are not hanging out in Facebook looking for Facebook leads, you know, yeah, the commercial they, leads, they, there's less of them. There's less transactions per year because you're talking about, you know, two and 10 and $50 million transactions, but cold outreach would make a lot of sense. Uh, I mean, matter of fact, when we're done with this podcast, Gus, you and I need to talk about that so we can penetrate my market a little bit more. Um, okay. But those Facebook leads are big and being able to really uh, target people based on age. Obviously, most people selling their property with equity are in that 55 to 75 year old range. You're going to be able to geo target them based on zip code. So in Facebook, you can drop a pin of where you want your leads to come from and then market, let's say, a five or a 10 mile radius around that pin to people ages 55 to 75 years old. Right. Those people are more likely to sell simply based on age. That's one way to set up a Facebook campaign and really direct uh, your ads specifically to those people that are going to sell. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I will say one thing, Josh, this is important. Uh, very recently, uh, Facebook has made some changes to that, right? Because Facebook has amazing demographic information yeah. about all of us. I mean, it's just, it's, uh, it, you go, you think about it, you can actually Healthy go animals. and download this stuff. You can actually go and look and look and see what they have. It's pretty, it's, it's impressive. It's impressive. It's one of the most powerful targeting platforms out there for real estate. I think it's employment and I think credit or finance, uh, they've limited what you can do on the demographic side because mm-hmm. of the compliance issues in the U.S., right? So there's a little bit less targeting ability in there for sure, um, but you can still do the geographic targeting. You can still do uh, a lot of targeting for these areas. They took away some of the demographic stuff you can do, mm-hmm. income-based targeting, age-based targeting, uh, you know, gender-based targeting, ethnicity. They took all that stuff away. But I'm here to tell you the good news is the algorithm within Facebook 
is still unbelievably powerful, right? Yeah. But you have to give it enough information in that ad copy, in that ad title to understand what you're trying to do, right? Mm -hmm. And you've got to give it as many hints as possible. And there's something, people should look this up. It's called the Google, sorry, the Facebook pixel. Um, and, the, but, you know, and you, you mentioned earlier about that IDX landing page, that IDX powered website. Well, you can have some of that, a similar thing for that, you know, for, for, for the investor leads as well. Um, if you drop that Facebook pixel, where you want your leads to land and the people that actually make it there are qualified leads that helps Facebook learn. Oh, this is the kind of person that Josh wants. Right. This is the kind of person I should be targeting. And that uh, algorithm within a matter of days, I'm and I'm talking about weeks or months here in a matter of days can be trained to find the right people. Right. So right people. I've seen this work on the residential side for business. sellers. Yeah, absolutely. And the cost <laughs> per lead is only a fraction of what you typically see uh, in Google pay-per-click, for example, which is the closest comparison I've found uh, on the online side. So yep. there's definitely an opportunity out there, Josh, even with the restrictions, even with those things, there's definitely, uh, uh, it takes more work than it used to, uh, but definitely you can get some success there if you're willing to put the time in to learn the platform. Are you ready to automate and explode your real estate investing? We're searching for extremely motivated individuals who are sick and tired of wasting time and want to finally see real results from their real estate investing business. We're searching for investors looking to get to the next level and become a bigger, better version of themselves while being a more successful real estate investing entrepreneur. Apply for mentoring and coaching at joshcantwellcoaching.com forward slash podcast. That's joshcantwellcoaching.com forward slash podcast. Gus, last question. Uh, actually, got two questions, but let's assume that someone wanted to have their own ISA in their own office, doesn't necessarily want to outsource the process. They oh. love the concept, but they want to do it themselves. What's a couple tips that you would give our audience and someone that says, hey, I want to have an inside salesperson, uh, but I want to do it myself in-house. What are some 100%. tips and strategies that you would give them to start their own team, their own ISA to outbound call or give them lists? What are some qualities and some characteristics that you use in your interview process? Some things awesome. you're, you're looking for with your candidates? Well, one thing I tell people you know, right now is you know, they want to have someone in house. I'd say when you want to hire your own ISA, you've got a couple options. Bring them truly in house, face to face with you. Right now, in the fall of 2020, there's a lot of folks that are looking for work across the country, right? Locally and across the country. So you're going to get a lot of candidates. If you're open to hiring people virtually, again, just throwing, I'm planting that seed, you can get talent from all over the U.S., every corner of the country, right? And, you know, the, the, you know hiring someone in New York City versus hiring someone, you know, in Southern Texas, there's a difference there, man. Cost-wise, culture-wise, everything, you have access to all of that talent as, as a business owner right now. So, so people should... Definitely consider that. That being said, you're looking for someone. I, I recommend understanding what pers personality profiles are because if you want someone that's a true cold caller, you're looking for someone that's assertive, that has that grit, right? That has that tenacity. And, and yes, the test can tell you some of that. Um, it's an indicator. It's not, it doesn't, it's not deterministic, but it's an indicator. And you want to test them out in-house, in right? I tell people, if, if you're spending a month in the interview and selection process, you're doing it wrong, right? Yeah. This job, you understand, instead of having one person in the role for 90 days to see if they work or not, I'd rather have five people in that role for those 90 days and put them, a call, put them to call right away, like mm -hmm. immediately, right? We have people in my company, they don't last a week because yeah. they just cannot perform on the phone. They don't have the tenacity, the grit. Let's just, you know, the courage, let's call it, let's call it what it is, the courage uh, to get on the phone with a U.S. consumer, Right. And, mm -hmm. and have, a, have a, a tough conversation with them. So you figure that out within days, Josh. This is not a three-month process. You figure that out whether they have at least the, val the work ethic, the, the tenacity, the grit to actually do this job. So I, my recommendation is, yes, have a hiring process for sure, but get them on the phone right away and so you can figure out whether they're going to be a good fit or not. And that yeah. can be a week or two of time. It's not three months of time whether they have the, the, the work ethic and the values to actually be a good fit on your team. So that's, that's my main recommendation is you, you find great ISAs by hiring a lot of ISAs, not by having a lengthy, lengthy, lengthy 
uh, hiring and selection process. process. That's my nice. Experience. Gus, how many leads per day do you think an ISA needs to be successful? Uh, and I guess, again, there's just two buckets, right? There's the cold, yeah. true outreach, and then there's the warm inbound lead. There, those might be different. The answer might be different based on those buckets, based on volume. But what is, in your opinion, is keep somebody busy, let's say full time, 40 hours a week, eight hours a day on the phone, bucket A being cold outreach, bucket B being warm leads. What's the amount of leads that we need to provide someone to be successful? Yeah. So, amazing question. The way we tackle, because we have to tackle this every day, Josh. I have to balance mm-hmm. my team. I have to figure out what we can do. We look at it from the other way around, not the leads coming in. It's the calls going out. An okay. ISA on a single line dialer can do about $200 a day, full-time person. It can be as little as 150 It can be as high as 250 may up to 300 depending on the ISA and the kind of task, the kind of CRM. Let's just say 200 is like an average. That's what we use to estimate. Okay. 200 outbound calls per day. So within a full month, it's about 4,000 outbound calls you have to play with every month. So how many leads can they handle? How many calls do you want to make per lead, right? Yeah. My recommendation within the first 30 days, you shouldn't make less than 10 to 15 attempts per lead, 10 to 15 attempts. So go, working that back in the ballpark of about two to 300 leads, if you want to have an intense follow-up process, if you want to do five calls and you're done, well, you can put, you know, 800 leads on that, on that ISA's plate. Again, I, I, I'm, it, I, this depends a lot on the lead source. Like you said, it definitely does. So that's how I would analyze it. Yeah. You've got 4,000 calls a month to play with. Where do you want to put them? You want to put them on a super intensive follow-up plan, which I would recommend for some of that cold outreach because those lists are valuable. You got to get every single last thing you can get out of them. Um, versus a Facebook lead, I wouldn't call a Facebook lead 20 times in the first month. I just wouldn't, right? I don't think that's the right way to convert those. Um, A little bit of a slower burn. I would spread out those calls a little bit more. Um, The the real answer is that it depends, but the analysis is how many calls can you make? So I would start there and work backwards. Nice. Love it. Gus, last question. Um, You've obviously learned a lot about sales. You've been in the business since 2010. You've uh, you know, kind of started your business and got your license after the Great Recession. You've seen a couple of different types of economies, the run up, and then now sort of the, the downturn in the economy due to COVID. The real estate market right now, though, is still super hot because there's, there's almost no inventory. According to the National Association of Realtors, there's only 2.7 months worth of inventory. It's the lowest since 1982, the lowest in wow. 38 years. Um, the lowest amount of inventory. That's why prices actually went up last month, 15% year over year. Prices went up in the middle of COVID because there's no inventory. So you've seen a lot. You've done a lot. You have a team now, 75 people. They're virtual. You obviously learn how to be an entrepreneur, how to build a company, how to work with a team in-house, and also now how to work with them virtual. You've learned a ton. What advice would you give some of our audience that maybe is not at your level or what advice would you give your younger former self when you were just starting in business after all of that growth that you've had over the last 10 years, what's a couple things that you think really stand out that you've learned that you like to pass on and kind of pay forward? I think the number one thing, uh, Josh, that I would like to have told myself even 10 years ago or not even that long ago, 10 years ago, uh, is patience, right? Any t- the worst What's that? decisions I've made. What's patience? Patience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, I know exactly, right? Uh, you know, but but you know, the 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 worst investment deals I've done, the worst hires I've done. The, well, not not even the, uh, hiring. I'm going to take that out. But the worst business deals, the worst, some of the worst decisions have been because I've got that money burning a hole in my pocket, man. I got to make this happen right away. Like, yeah. Well, you know what? Take give it a minute, right? Or hey, I'm 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 making deals happen. I'm, I I how do I make that? accelerated. So I, I, I follow Gary V and, you know, Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, marketing guru. He's always saying a phrase that I really like. You've got to be quick in the micro. You've got to be patient in the macro. You've got to be, as a business owner, we do have to react quickly to the circumstances we do, but to have your business go to the next level, that doesn't happen in three months. That doesn't happen mm-hmm. in six months. You've got to go through the pains of growing, of get, ma- making a bad decision, go down, and then you got to go back up. Because of that, that, those circumstances, those difficult situations, difficult decisions that don't go your way are going to teach you. And that's part of the yeah. journey. I wish I knew that. I think I, I had heard that before. I never really internalized it until I lived it as yeah. a business owner, right? Those ups and downs make you a better business owner. And I didn't understand. I thought failure was failure. 
Like, yeah. holy cow, I've messed up. This is the end. Like, no, bro, this is the journey, right? This is exactly what happens when you're learning this stuff and you're, and you're playing around with your own money and you're taking your own risks, right? So that, that, that part of it. I would tell people, look at the big picture, always have patience, do, do, do react quickly in the micro, but always have patience in the macro. That is fantastic stuff. Gus, listen, again, if one of our uh, audience members wants to reach out to you, wants to talk about hiring an ISA from your firm, just wants more information about converting more leads, where can they get a hold of you? Where can they get your information? Uh, the best way to find me is powerisa.com. That's our website. Check it out. It's our company, Power ISA. You can also look me up on Facebook. You can type Power ISA in the Facebook search bar. You know, I'll pop up there. I have a free Facebook group. You can also join where we talk about marketing tactics and, you know, tips and tricks, all that kind of stuff. So we'd love to continue the conversation there as in Facebook as well. Awesome. Gus, listen, this has been fantastic. Appreciate all the information. Thanks for joining me today on Accelerated Investor. Thanks so much. Appreciate the opportunity. So guys, there you have it. Hope you enjoyed that interview with Gus. I had a blast interviewing him. And again, when I owned my real estate brokerage and I was really focused on wholesaling and buying rehabs and I owned my brokerage and we had about 12 to 15 realtors that worked for us, I had an inside sales agent that did nothing but work with inbound leads and outbound cold calls. This is something I'm very, very familiar with, had a lot of success with as well when we were very transactional in our business. So if you're wholesaling, you're a realtor, you're looking for more rehab deals or building your rental portfolio, definitely reach out to Gus and check out his services for an inside sales agent. If you enjoyed this interview, you, leave us a comment, leave us a rating, share this all over social media, and don't forget to join our private Facebook group exclusively for Accelerated Investors. Go to Facebook, search Accelerated Investor in Facebook, and join our group today. I can't wait to see you inside of that group and share more strategies with you. If you enjoyed this, leave us a rating, leave us a review, share it all over social media. It's super important to me. I can't tell you how honored and uh, you know kind of privileged I am to share this information with amazing guests and solo casts with you a couple times a week. It's an absolute blast for me. I can't wait to share some more with you on the next episode. Thanks for being here today and we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Hey, Josh here. And do you want to win a free Accelerated Investor t-shirt? All you have to do is give Accelerated Investor, our podcast, Accelerated Investor, a rating and a review on iTunes. Okay, do that now. Then send us a screenshot on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. What we're gonna do then is every week we're gonna pick our favorite rating and review and we're gonna send that person a free t-shirt and maybe again, some other cool fun stuff as well from Accelerated Investors. So again, don't forget to take a screenshot, leave a rating, review, take a screenshot, send it to us so we know exactly who you are. And then once a week, every week on the podcast, we will announce a new winner. Don't forget to take a screenshot and send it to us so we know exactly who you are. We'll announce a new winner every week. You've been listening to Josh Cantwell and the Accelerated Investor Podcast. Leave a comment on our iTunes channel and let us know what you want to learn next or who you'd like Josh to interview. While you're there, give us a five-star rating and make sure to subscribe so you can be the first to hear new episodes. Follow Josh Cantwell and his companies, Strategic Real Estate Coach and Freeland Ventures on all social media platforms now and stay up to date on new training and investment opportunities. To start your journey toward the lifestyle you've always dreamed of. Apply for coaching at joshcantwellcoaching.com.